uh, the books. We've got, um, of course, three books that are um, written already. They're between uh, 80 to 90, you know, less than 100 pages. And uh, and we do have, the, of course, the website. Uh, we do have the um, uh, the squeeze page, of course. So, you know, we have all that set up and ready to go. Um, so basically, there's a couple thoughts that we had, and um, uh, this, this would be a good time to discuss it. We're thinking about putting these books on uh, Amazon Kindle, and um, we'd like to have your thoughts on that. And um, uh, but also, you know, putting them on there to get some response, get some people that would be interested in in um, in purchasing them, but also interested in the coaching. That's basically, like you said, the books are not the thing that really solidifies the business. It's the way to the business, and um, it's the coaching that um, that my husband is going to do as well as, um, uh, you know, podcasts and, and things like that. So uh, what would you, what would be your thoughts? Okay, let me ask you a couple of questions first, and then I'll, I'll give you my thoughts, and my guess is I'll give you a strategy as well. As long as you like some of my thoughts, I'll give you a strategy to make it all work. Tell me about these books. I mean, what are what are the topics of each of the the three books? Okay, uh, the first topic is uh, let's see, a publicity book. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the the other book is um, uh, know your customers, um, and the and then there was another book on advertising, I believe. the The books are a rewrite or re you know rewritten from the books that. David wrote in the early 90s, and uh, so uh, it's taking a lot of the ideas from, the, I think, the first two books and compiled them into, um, sep or separating them into several smaller bits, you know, of, of his book. And um, so, but it's, it's all for the business that has, it's a brick and mortar business. It's not internet business or online businesses, although uh, he will be giving some, you know, some um, ideas or suggestions on on how to, for businesses to go online to get, you know, to have online, uh, to do publicity online. But it's basically for the bricks and mortar where people still go and get advertising or publicize by doing certain campaigns to get people in their door. So those are the kind of books that, that he's written. He's, he's, um, David has taught small business classes for years, um, and, of course, he's written three books on it. He just found out that uh, it went online and there are, there's two of his books that have been written in um, other foreign language, uh, Hungarian and Turkey. And um, and so, you know, there is there is a market out there, but, you know, we don't know how big that market is. There's a lot of people that still want to start small business. So he thought by getting the rights back to his book that he would go ahead and get them, rewrite them, and basically divide all those books up into smaller bits and maybe expound on several I other ideas, updating them and things like that. Uh -huh. And okay, so that, that's where we're at. Excellent, excellent. So let me just, I think this goes without saying, but I just want to make sure that I know what I'm talking about here when I say this. All three of these books are, are really high quality. I mean, this isn't the run-of-the-mill information people can get just by hunting and pecking um, online. I mean, this is this is basically top of the line information. Some of this is is information that's not readily available at any price. Am I correct in saying that? That is correct. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Okay. And then the the goal would be to get the the, the person that purchases this 
this book into the long-term coaching program, and that is a, a advertising or a promotion a coaching program for a brick-and-mortar business. Am I right? That is correct, yes. Okay, excellent. Okay, so let me just give you a couple of thoughts first, and then we'll pull all these thoughts together, and if you like the direction that we're going, then I will give you, I'll kind of give you the details on how to make this work, okay? So okay. there's a few things, let me just throw a few things out. They're not necessarily part of the strategy, but I think it'll be useful for you to hear them. You may know them. The first thing is, if you go the, the Kindle route, you'll want to choose one you'll, and, and hold the other two back for another purpose or a future Kindle or whatever the case is. You'll want to choose one of those to do as a test to Kindle um, and, you know, just get a feel for, hey, do you like the Kindle marketing? Let's call it that, and I'll explain a little bit in a moment about that. You know, it's kind of like when people get started with article marketing. I, I love it. Some people, they get into it, they – they struggle with it. And so, you know, you may find the same thing happens with your Kindle marketing, that you get in there and you, it this doesn't kick off and you're not excited about it. You don't want to have all three of the books up there making that happen, okay? That's the first right. thought. Okay? The second thought would be, and this would be something that we'll have to kind of fine-tune a strategy for, uh, but if you're going to go the Kindle route, Okay. Then obviously, and you, you brought it up earlier, you're really wanting to do it to generate leads. You're not doing it to generate revenue on the front end. You're doing it to generate leads. Now, because of that, I would probably lean towards what Amazon is calling a single, I think. They call it an Amazon or a Kindle um, single. And, you know, it's 20,000 words. There's a requirement of a number of words. I don't know if it's 15 to 20 or 20 to 25 or something along those lines. It's a shorter book. And I'll tell you why I like a shorter book. It's the same reason why we use a squeeze page, a short squeeze page, to get someone's name and email rather than using a 10-page sales letter to get their name and email. Because, you know, if we just compare it to using a squeeze page, if we used a half-page squeeze page, we might be able to get a 30% conversion rate to a name and email, okay? But if we did a 10-page squeeze page, we might get, uh, let's say, a 5% conversion rate to name and email. And if the purpose of the Kindle is the same as a squeeze page, you know, squeeze page, the purpose is to get leads, well, the Kindle, if we're going to use the Kindle as a, the purpose is to generate leads, albeit much higher quality leads than squeeze page leads. These are paid leads. They're beautiful leads. Okay? But if we want to use them for leads, we want, we want to make what they read as short as, as possible and still pack enough punch to prove that you and Dave know what you're talking about. And the reason for that is, you know the statistic. You, you, you probably heard the statistic, and I think it's only 5% of people that purchased the book ever read all the way through. Okay, and that's a hardback that you purchased. You had it sitting on your coffee table. My guess would be, and I haven't seen a statistic on it, my guess would be with Kindles it's even lower. People buy the Kindle. They read the first few pages. They think it's great information. Their, their wife calls. They get distracted tomorrow. They forgot they bought the book, and they go buy another one. That's my guess, and I could be way off on that, but my guess is readership of a Kindle is even lower than readership of a physical book. And so what that, that, we couple that with the next idea, and that is that some people will not take the second step, which is contact you, until they've completed the first one. They, they have to consume some people have to consume one item before they can move on. Now, some people don't. I mean, you know, that there's a class of, of buyers or, you know, we call them hyper-responders. I don't know what you call them in the offline world. Maybe it's the same. They're hyper-responders and they buy everything and they don't fall into this class. But a lot of people fall into this class that they, they have to consume one thing before they can purchase the next. What this means is that the shorter the Kindle is, the more effective it should be at getting people to take action after reading the portion of the Kindle. Okay, now, okay. If, if you were to do a perusal 
through the Amazon best selling lists, which are now Amazon has now in, they're now including Kindle sales as a part of the best seller list. In fact, I don't even believe they break them apart now, physical versus the Kindle. You will find, especially if you dig into some of the subcategories, that a decent percentage of them are the 99 cent, the 699 Kindle singles. And I believe that that's a reflection of people utilizing what I'm sharing with you right now, that people are using those Kindles as, as lead generators. Okay. So having said that, that would be kind of the first step. Okay, now, you do not want um, – your husband's name is Dave, right? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. I just wanted to make sure I wasn't, I, I wasn't uh, calling right. him somebody who doesn't. So That's okay. you don't want him to spend three months rewriting the book into, a, you know, a 30-page or a 15,000 word or whatever the requirement is. You just want to take – three chapters or five chapters out of it and reserve the book for later. So once once you if, if you make this Kindle thing happen, then you can do something you, know, you can release the other part of the book as physical something physical. You could release the other part of the book as a fifty dollar Kindle. Okay, so you, you you have a five dollar Kindle that's the first three chapters or first five chapters that they love it, they can go invest in a seventy five dollar Kindle or, you know, whatever. I don't know what the pricing requirements are, but you make it so that, you know, if they really want the other part, it's there's a different price on it. And we don't we don't call it the first four chapters. We're going to call it the first part's going to be a complete part, and the next part is going to be another complete part. That's going to be the advanced or whatever. I mean, it really depends on how it's broken up and all that. But it shouldn't take a lot of time to isolate the critical chapters. This isn't something that will take a lot of time. Okay, yeah. now the next thing to, to keep in mind or that I'll share with you is that if you go this route, your, your, your job, so first of all, if you, put, if you make it a Kindle, you're on a great platform. People love the, the Amazon platform. They trust the Amazon platform. Um, obviously, a lot of people have Kindles. I, I, you know, there's apps, I guess, all over the place where people can read a Kindle a lot of other places as well. Okay, so you have a great platform. Okay, but if you just throw the book up there on that platform, it'll do, do no more good than if you throw a squeeze page onto the wide, World Wide Web and you do nothing with it. Okay, so once right. you get the Kindle up there, your goal is to drive traffic and search rankings to your Kindle sales page, okay? Now, there's okay. two things we want to do, or you'll want to do. The first thing you'll want to do is get it onto the bestseller list for whatever your category is. So, uh, you know, brick and mortar business, I don't, or entrepreneurship, I don't know what the categories are, but you're going to want to get it on that list. And once it's right. there, you are going to want to watch it climb. I mean, you're going to make your goal every day, to drive enough people to that page, no matter what you have to do, to get enough people buying every day that you climb up that list. Okay, that's what you want to okay. do. Okay, that, that that's one half of the equation. The other half of the equation. This will take a little longer, but you're, the other half of the equation is you're going to work on getting search engine rankings and listings to your Amazon page the same way that you work on getting search engine rankings to a squeeze page or to an article or anything else by building backlinks, quality backlinks, by writing articles, submitting them to the directories, posting them on websites, and when in your resource box in the article, you are going to do an anchor text link to the Kindle page that represents your book over at Amazon. You are going to, you're going to maximize it for various keywords. So let's say you do the publicity, okay? And you think about, you know, and you may want to, if you're going to do this, you may want to buy, and I don't use, I don't do much keyword research, you know that, um, because of the, the strength of the article marketing. I would say with this, you may want to do the, the regular keyword research, buy some software if you don't already have it, if you don't already know what your top 150 keywords are that people search for, and let's just say we're talking about publicity, they're looking for publicity for their, their brick-and-mortar business. Let's assume that publicity for a brick-and-mortar business is the keyword. You're going to want to show up, number one, in Google and Yahoo 
for the keyword publicity for brick and mortar business or publicity for a roofing business or publicity for a plumbing business or puff, you know you, you know how it goes okay that people right. that are looking for publicity that they are going to run into your Kindle every time they turn around and right. that is going to also drive traffic so you're going to you're going to treat every one of those Kindle sales as sort of a pre-lead Okay, then what you're going to do, you're going to, and I don't, you're going to have to do this research on your own. Maybe you've already done it because I don't know the Kindle inside out like I obviously do the article marketing. You, what you need to do is find out what you can do in terms of linkage inside the book. And I know it's quite limited because they want those books. They want them to be easy to download. They, they don't want them to take up a lot of bandwidth. They don't want them to right. be moving advertisements. But what you're going to want to do is wherever you're allowed to, you want to have call to actions. Now, I don't know if that's at the end of the chapter, at the beginning, in the end, whatever it is, but you're going to want to have a call to action. And your call to action in the Kindle should look very similar to the article marketing resource box. So it will be something along the lines of, by the way, do you want to learn more about taking publicity of your brick and mortar business to the next level? If so, click here and you send them to a squeeze page, and now you've gotten into your funnel. The difference here is they're not a traditional cold lead. Not that a squeeze page lead is ever a cold lead, but, I mean, these are hot compared to a squeeze page lead because they've just bought from you. So you're going to want to get pretty aggressive about whatever your method of selling the coaching is, whether it's on the phone, whether it's through the, the sales letters, whatever the case is. You're going to want to start moving people through a product funnel um, very quickly. How does this strategy sound to you, Nancy? Yeah, that that sounds about what what we're thinking of because these books were basically written to be like an interactive manual. The one thing that um, was very successful in uh, the um, the small business classes, and you did this for SBCP, um, you know, for small business development groups. And um, uh, but what was successful is that in what people got mostly from his, and they were like eight. Eight to twelve week classes. Okay, most everybody everybody that took the class loved it because David got them to think and about how they wanted to start their business and you know and he planted many seeds. And when we took the book back, when we got the books back from the publisher, what he did was he he basically rewrote them as interactive manuals to put, you know, getting started tomorrow morning. These are the three things that you must think of. And she think of all these things. That, and each book is basically done as a manual. And basically what we decided to do by putting them in the Kindle is just what you're saying. Shorten them, making them something that gives them like a, a little bit of a bite of what the books are about and get, you know, get people interested in them and then have them come and then purchase the bigger book, which is more of the manual, and then, of course, the big back end that we're going to purchase, that, we're, that we have all, you know, that we're having, all, it's almost all rewritten, is an 8 to 10 week class or a whole manual on each specific thing when you start your small business. That's our back end. That's our huge back end that we're going to be developing and getting that ready. So, your ideas on your idea on getting the Kindle and then have you know making it small, like you're saying, 50 pages maybe, 40, 50 pages. Is that right? I, I would do it as small as Kindle will allow, as small as Amazon will allow. And I don't know. There's a there's a keep there's a number for those singles. It's like 10,000 words okay. to 15, or 15 to 20, 10, 000, whatever 000, their requirement 000. is. Okay. And then, and yeah. then, basically, just go ahead and sell it for ninety nine cents. Then is that correct? I would do it for dollar if if you're going to do if you're going to do this as a lead generation campaign, and you're going to be serious about working on driving traffic, you're gonna you're gonna put ninety days into making this a best selling Amazon Kindle, and you're gonna drive traffic. You're gonna make things happen. You're gonna you're gonna shake and rock the. The, whatever the the world is that you're in, whether it's going to be publicity or you know whatever, getting started Market, with your small business, you know, whatever yeah. direction you're going to go first, you're going to rock that world for 90 days. If you're willing to do that, just put all of your energy into that. Everything you do, don't do anything else. Just work on that. I'd go with 99 cents. 
You can always raise okay. the price down the road. Okay, now if, if, if you were a client that said, you know, I just want to have it there as credibility, I don't care if I only sell two a day, then I would say, let's put nine ninety nine or fifteen ninety nine on it, and make it a, a better quality lead. But for the, at least initially, I would do everything possible to get that to kind of climb the entrepreneurship rankings, whatever the 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 category is in Amazon for what you're going to be doing. And at I that see. point, yeah, I would go with the ninety nine cents and don't you know you're not focusing on the money that's going to come in from that sale. You know, just like you don't focus on the money that might come in from a squeeze page, your your right. goal is going to be to sell those two back end products. And okay. you're using this as a lead generator. Absolutely, Nancy. Okay, so then so then the books that we have that are still like an interactive manual and we've, you know, expanded on them. We've got David has about six to eight books already basically lined up. Plus he has a um uh, a book uh, called My Bicycle Shop, and it's basically a fiction story, fictitious story about somebody who, and he uses this he in his classes, uh, you know, okay, we're going to discuss, uh, here's the business, My Bicycle Shop, and uh, Sam here has this bicycle shop. So basically he goes through step by step it, so to get people to, it really it's almost so basic that it gets he gets people to really, think about these things that you really need to know about starting a small business. And so the novel or novella of my bicycle shop is almost done too. So that in a sense is going to be even an, an extra one. So so we did start, we did have those books on our website and we, of course we haven't sold them. Uh, of course we didn't do a lot, you know, a lot of marketing right now. But it at, at Thirty-seven or forty-seven dollars a piece. We thought that that was too high too, you know, to put even a price tag like that high, you know, to for the, those books. And I think that's if you're asking us where we're struggling, it's the price of the books. That's one of the struggles that we're having right now too. Okay, well let's let's talk about that just for a moment. By the way, I want to acknowledge. Um, is it? Felicita, or how do you pronounce your name on the line with us as well? Okay, I Hi just there. saw it. It's, Hello, did it's I put your name, or how do, you, how do you say it? Felicita. Felicita, excellent. Yeah. Well, it's good to have you here, and uh, basically it's uh, just you and Nancy, so you're both getting basically about a half an hour of private coaching here. So um, Nancy and I will probably talk for about five or ten more minutes, and then you and I will work together on your business. How does that sound? That sounds awesome. Excellent. All right, let's head back to Nancy here. Okay, so let's talk about pricing. Ebooks are e ebooks in today's market. Well, let's just say this. A couple of years ago, you could sell an ebook for what the information was worth, meaning that if the information was worth $300, you could sell an ebook for $300. Within the last couple of years, with the advent of, of the, uh, the commercialized ebook, primarily the Kindle, um, people have simply become accustomed to this idea that they don't pay more than $10. For e -book. And that's why, you know, I don't write ebooks anymore. That's why all of my training is is uh, MP3. And the reason for that is because I can sell it for what the information is worth. However, okay. with the, the Kindle platform, you you have a superior platform for lead generation. It's far superior to even uh, to a squeeze page and an article marketing system if you're willing to put the extra work into it and, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so what, what we have is we have a market. You, can't, you cannot sell, I, I hate to use the word cannot, but it, it's extremely difficult these days to sell an ebook for what the information is worth. And so that's why one of the things we've talked about and, of course, the direction that you've taken is with these manuals and this interactive type of thing so that you can – 
the direction you want to go with maybe even the other two books, whichever you don't choose to put on Kindle, is instead of calling them an ebook, you call them an interactive manual or even an interactive uh, digital business building software. <laughs> and you can literally organize them so that each page is a page on a website. And, and so that it, there's the software you can use to, to make them look as though they're really a fancy piece of online software. Okay, so that the information isn't associated with being an ebook. And so what you're going to want to use, like we talked about, you're going to want to use that Kindle ebook, or what you're probably going to end up doing is calling it a single, a Kindle single. You're probably going to want to have one of those, like we talked about, as a Kindle single that's going to be priced way low, 99 cents, for example. Then you're going to take the bulk of even your printed materials, and you're going to make them into uh, interactive material, whether that's called, whether that's making it really a PDF that's really an ebook, but making it look like an interactive manual, or that's you know having somebody put it online as an interactive uh, website almost that they purchase access to. Okay. Okay. Now, one idea that that because of the fact that you've got a number of different books that are really ready to go. One thing that you could do, you know, one of the things that I've, I've taught over the years is the power of contrast. And, of course, it's the concept that we use when we write a sales letter for, let's say, a $10,000 coaching program when we know that only one in, say, 10,000 people coming through will purchase that. The purpose of it is, is not necessarily to sell it. It's to have it as a power of contrast. What I would do is – with, you're really in a unique position. A lot of people go on to Kindle, they only have so much content. You have all of this content. I would take one book and post it at 99 cents. And at the very same time, I would take another one of those books, maybe the Know Your Customer book, you know, the full 80 or 90 pages. And instead of making that a single, you'll make that a regular Kindle and load it up, have it the maximum number of pages you're allowed for the Kindle, okay, and put the maximum price you're allowed. I don't know what it is, whether it's 39 or 69 or 99. Okay, now your purpose in that second Kindle is not for people to buy it. Although some people will buy the first one, they'll be so blown away by the content, they'll say, wow, I got all this for 99 cents, what can I get for 99? You'll get a buyer here and there, but your purpose is not buying. Your purpose is so when they go look at your profile on Amazon or they look at your, you, you know, they, they, uh, the page that says if you like this, you might like this, if you can get those two to come up simultaneously, people will see that and go, wow, Dave's got a book here for $99.00. He's worth something. I've never seen a Kindle at that price. He's got a lot of confidence. He's arrogant even to put that price on. It must be good. I'll buy the 99. You'll, you'll really be playing into that psychological element of the power of contrast. So that's the very first thing I would do. I would find a way to upload both of those literally on the same day. When you do your 99-cent launch, have the $99, $69, whatever Amazon permits, at immediately there at the same time. Okay. And I would also, you, you have the products. I mean, you've got a back end, you've got your back end interactive manual. You're going to very quickly have a coaching program in place. You, if you sell, if I had to guess, I hate get guests giving numbers in a vacuum, but that's what I'm going to do. And I, this is my disclaimer. These numbers are in vacuum. I have no idea if they're accurate or not. But if I had to guess based on the buying activity that I see on all other kinds of things. I, I don't have buying activity on Kindles, so this is totally hypothetical, but I think I'm probably going to be close, okay? If my guess is that out of the 99-cent Kindle buyers, um, if, if you market as aggressively as you're allowed to in the book just to get a name and email, you should get 30% of those people to become a an, an, uh, subscriber on your list. Okay? Now, these subscribers on your list are already going to be qualified buyers. We know that. Yeah. My guess is, I could be way off on this number, but my guess is, I'm going to give you a range first, and I'll, then I'll give you my guess. My guess is that I haven't, you know, if we were to, if we were thinking statistics, my guess is that an interval of 10 to 30% would cover maybe a 90% confidence level. 
okay? So somewhere between 10 and 30% of the people that become subscribers should buy the first, the first main product in your funnel. Let's call it a $100 interactive manual, okay? Somewhere between 10 and 30. And if I had to just venture one single number, I would say you're going to gravitate towards 20%, okay? I'm going, to, I'm going to run some numbers. I'm going to show you what this will mean in just a moment for some numbers. Out of the 20% who buy the $100 product, if you do some decent upsell marketing, which as we get to it, I'll show you how to do it. You know how to do it. Dave knows how to do it, and you've, you've learned it from me, and he knows it from the back-end world. It's probably in the bicycle book, okay? But I'll, show, I'll, I'll, I'll help you tweak it so it works really well in your campaign. My guess is you can get another 20% into the coaching program. And now, it could be 10%. It will depend on pricing a little. It will depend on a few things. But let's look at some numbers. Let's imagine you have 1,000 people buy the Kindle for $0.99. Cents, okay? yeah. 30% of those should become subscribers. That's 300. 20%, mm -hmm. which is 60, should buy the $100 interactive manual. And I'm not calling it $100. I mean, you can do 77 or 127 We can agree on a price later. It doesn't matter. But just in somewhere in that price range. And 20% of those, in my opinion, 12 people should join your coaching program. Okay? Yeah. That would be my guess. Now, there's a couple of different ways we can look at this. One is you can look at it and say, okay, 1,000 singles. You know, that's $1,000. I think Amazon gets a third. That's 300 a thousand means sixty people at a hundred bucks. That's another six hundred dollars for six thousand dollars, and twelve people in a coaching program. What price are you thinking about for that thirteen-week coaching program, Nancy? Oh, you mean the thirteen-week coaching program? Uh, uh -huh. you, probably about probably about um, ten to thirteen weeks. It's usually uh, fair to say probably about three hundred dollars, three three hundred okay, to five hundred dollars for the coaching. Okay. Yeah. I would, I would, um, I'd love to see 500. I'd love to see 500. I don't think if you were to do some split tests between, say, 297 and 497, especially if you had a little payment offer, two or three or four payments or something for the 500, you're probably going to find a statistically insignificant difference between 297 and 500, but you'll make more money. So I would gravitate towards 500. So let's call it for this demonstration, we'll call it 500. So 500 times 12 is another 6,000. So that's 12,300 on the back end. What that means, well, 12,000 on the back end, 300 from Amazon. What that means is 12,000 by 1,000 Kindles, Kindle single sales at 99 cents, which again, if you do just a little bit of marketing, you should be able to make that kind of thing happen. You're looking at $12 per Kindle sale. Another way to look at this is, continuing revenue, especially if you focus on some payments. And we haven't even talked about the back end of this back end. I mean, if you get 12 people into a $500 coaching program, um, I tell you, I, it, it's been five years since I ran, with the exception of one that I'm, I'm running right now, but there's been a five-year gap since the last time I ran a $500 coaching program. I normally run them between two grand and ten grand. The, the, the last time that I ran one that I, I have results from, because I'm right in the middle of one that I'm doing, but 50% of the people in that $500 class enrolled in a $5,000 class afterwards. You know, I don't know if those are – I only did it one time, so there's not a significant number. I don't know what a long-term number would be, but even if, it, you, could, if you could convert – 30%, which would be 3.6 people per 12, into a long-term program of two to 300 a month, and the average person stayed in for 10 months, you're looking at 2,000 times 3.6, which is 7,200 on the back end. It's long-term back end in addition. Mm -hmm. uh, my guess is that in long-term back end, you can nearly double your initial back end sales. Okay, and, and when I say long term, I'm talking two or three or four years. I mean, I've, I've got people that have been in my programs in and out in different programs for four or five. I have some clients that have been with me for five years. And since basically, like I have some clients that enjoyed my very first coaching program ever, and they're still working with me. Okay, and, you know, I mean, obviously that's the power of connection and relationship and all of that. But you can do it as well. I mean, you and Dave are – 
you, you, you do a great job of communicating everything I've seen from you, you two in terms of anything that I've seen in a product or sales page or anything. You connect. You connect well. You're personable. You can do the same thing on your back end that I do, and that is people continue to come back and back and back. And so, you know, what, even what you make on the front end is, should be small compared to what you do on not just, you know, we're talking about your $100 product and your $500 program as a back end. There's a back end to that, and there's even a back end to that, okay? Okay. Um, how does all that sound? That, that, sounds, that sounds good. I, I, it's, a good to, it's good to refocus on, the, on, on your suggestions, and I, I think that your suggestions uh, work, work very well. Uh, and that's very similar to where we want to go. Uh, one more thing before we're done. Um, when you say, you know, when we have the the Kindle, 99 cent Kindle, where we just give a little overview or whatever, a small piece of it, and you and you say in the body, in whatever, wherever it is in in, in the report or in the novella, what it, whatever it is, you say, uh, you put a link in there and you're saying, how would you like to go, you know, if you are, you know, like, if if you like what you if you like what you read or like what I'm saying, how would you like to take it to the next step? What would that, you're saying that there would be a hyperlink. What hyperlink would that be to? Would that be to that other book then? No, I would make that hyperlink to a squeeze page. So I would create a brand new squeeze page that is a special offer for buyers of the Kindle book. Okay, so you're going to make okay. everybody feel really good when they get to that squeeze page. This is going to be a special offer for buyers of the whatever the name is, Publicity for Brick and Mortar, uh, Kindle, a special offer. Okay? Um, and then you're gonna it's gonna be a short squeeze page, just like we do squeeze pages. Have a have a, have a headline, discover the secret to whatever, okay? Five bullet points. And then what you're going to do is uh, here's what I <laughs> let's take this to another level. Let's take this to, to another level. And I believe I learned this from Lee McIntyre. Okay, um, and I just want to give credit where credit is due. There's not a lot of people do what I'm getting ready to share with you. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take another product that you have, something that has an information value of $97. It doesn't need to be a huge thing. It can be a, I mean, I've probably got 10-page documents that are worth $500, okay, in information. If it was just information, if it, you know, it, you know, so it's, when we write an ebook, I mean, we, when we write a book, when we when we record something, we have to give so much background information and step by step. But you know, we may take 50 pages to write what really, if we were to boil it down, and people didn't care what it looked like, five pages. And you know, some of what I teach, the the concept, one concept could be worth $500. Same thing with Dave and you. One concept you teach could be $500 worth. Okay, you can take that and put it into a document. 10-page document, a 30-page document, whatever. Or you can make a recording, make a one-hour recording with some information that, that is verifiably, you believe in your heart of hearts that it's worth $100 or $500. Then you're going to go out and write a, a sales page. Okay, Write a quick sales page. This does not have to be an effective sales page. In a way, this is going to be a, um, what's a good word for it? It's going to be like a dummy sales page. Okay? It's going to work. It's going to have a payment button on it for $97. It's going to have you know, a call to action if they choose to, if someone were to ever choose to purchase it, they could. But you're not going to advertise. You're not going to push people to purchase it. You're going to have a bona fide sales letter for a $97 value product. And then on the squeeze page, you, underneath your five bullet points, you are going to put in parentheses something, and you may want to split test this language. I, again, I don't do this. I, Lee McIntyre's, I've seen him do it, and, and apparently very, very successfully. I love the concept. Um, it's just something that, you know, I, 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 I guess I, I get stuck in tradition, and I continue to do what is always work. But we're building a new campaign for you. And I, I'd love to see you put something like, in parentheses, um, by the way, this is for sale for $97 here, but don't buy it there. And then the here is going to be a link to the actual $97 sales page. Okay? Then underneath it, you're going to say, because you purchased the special Kindle 
for a limited time. You don't even need to use the words limited time if you're not going to make it limited time. You don't, you don't, you just, I wouldn't even use them. This is the long term campaign. So because you're a special offer buyer of the Kindle, you get this for absolutely nothing. All you've got to do is enter your name and email address below. What you're going to do is you're going to build up the value of what it is. And when they read it, they're going to believe that it has a higher value than if they get it for free, like, than if it was just a free document. We've all done this before. I mean, you know, if, if we go to the store and one pair of jeans is $5, another pair is $100, if we purchase the $5 pair of jeans, it may be the exact same pair of jeans, but we're going to know in the back of our mind that this pair of jeans just isn't worth what the other pair is worth. And it's the same thing when it, it, it's just – Pricing psychology. When people get it, if they if they believe that it has a higher worth, and again, the value of the information needs to be whatever you call it being worth. When they read it, they will read it with a different set of eyes. They will get more out of it. They will actually implement it. Just like people that are hearing the sound of my voice because people are paying me to get this information, they'll implement it at a higher rate than if they were to just get this information that I'm sharing right now for free. And I've, I've tested that before, by the way. I've taken high-level trainings and just given them away as free, and I get very little result out of people. But if I sell the, the same thing, I sell the same thing, even for nominal price, I will get more people to actually take action. It, it's just a pricing psychology type of thing. So do you understand right. what I'm suggesting that you do right here? Yes. Yeah. yeah. And That's please understand, I'm not, I'm not suggesting in any way, shape, or form any smoke and mirrors. I'm not asking, I'm not even thinking about being unethical or I mean, anything. That's why I'm, I'm being very specific about how to set it up. It's going to actually be for sale. It's going to be something that has that actual value. People could actually purchase it if they chose to. And your language is not on your squeeze page is not going to be along the lines of a hundred people are buying this every day. Here, get it for free. It's going to be you you could purchase it at this page for $97, but don't. Because you're a special Kindle buyer, you can get it for free. Just enter your name and email address to get it. Okay, and that language, it's, you know, I'm being very careful. I'm being very clear about what this language is, but I want to be so clear that not only is it clear and accurate, but it's in no way deceptive. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, I see. Okay. All righty, Nancy, you're very welcome. And here's what I'm going to do because of the nature of this call. Um, I'm going to, I'm doing kind of separate recordings so that we have different topics on different recordings. So give me about oh, five seconds here to stop this recording and start the next one and then um, 